Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Simon from BizLearn. Hi and welcome to a brand new video concerning what's new NX 1980 Sketch Solver. Today I'm going to show you some problems that I had with the new solver after the release in 1926. And some of the, I would say, bugs have of course been fixed during some minor releases. So even if you are using NX 1926, problems concerning the sketch have been solved already. I'm not gonna demonstrate a complete collection of problems today. I'm just gonna be concerning one of the problems and create a further video in the future where I'm going to demonstrate some of the issues that have been solved during minor and major releases. Today I'm going to be demonstrating NX 1980 because there is an enhancement within the sketch I'd also like to discuss beside one of the problems that have been solved during one of the minor releases. Anyway, I'm just going to introduce the part here. This is what I have called the impossible pattern. And next week, I'm going to upload a tutorial of how to create this. The pattern here is not possible to being created with the pattern features. So you will have to use a workaround in order to create a pattern of triangles that are perfectly aligning each other. And my intent here was to be able to define a different number. I'm just going to display the sketch. This sketch is used to create the triangles, as you can see here. But after defining a different number of instances, I'm just reducing it. You can see the sketch obviously fails. This sketch has been fully defined. So this shouldn't have happened. What's the problem in here? In the past, when you're creating relations to external references within the sketch by use of the new sketch solver, as you can see, those relations towards the references are somehow lost. In that case, as you can see, there is a relation from sketch to a left point and the right point, which are now displayed. This one is left, this one is right. And this wouldn't have been necessary. But anyway, I was just trying out a little bit. So the version of this I'm going to show you next week is different. It's simplified. But this was my first try. And of course, I was projecting the points into my sketch in order to create a reference. But anyway, a relation to a projected point failed in the past. Now it won't fail. In NX 1926, after the release, I was repairing this on and on. And it didn't matter. After a change of number of instances, the sketch failed. Now I have opened this old part, which hasn't been modified since in the latest version. And now if I now repair this, or if I create it initially, it's no more gonna fail. The only thing I got to do here, just because this relation has been lost, I've got to make this equal again. The last time I have to say the sketch now is fully defined. And I'm going to finish the sketch. So I have repaired this in the latest version in the latest minor and major release of Siemens NX, in this case, NX 1980, the last time. And it doesn't matter whether I repair an old sketch or create a new sketch. This special use case when creating references to external object should be working properly. So now I'm going to define a different number like 22. And I'm also going to increase to 30 again in order to check whether this now is stable and just have a look at the beautiful pattern, which is now working properly without any fails, without any mistakes. And next week, I'm going to show you a more complex, but still simplified version of this kind of pattern, which is only possible by using the flattening and forming option, which is 
not brand new, but for some of us is a new function and we didn't have a use case, but I now have use cases for such patterns along, I would say along a shape, which is, well, just the extrude, which you can see here, a pattern along such a shape and all the instances are perfectly aligned. There is something else I would like to show you. This sketch is referenced on a coordinate system and I have created some points there for as well. I'm just gonna hide this. So here you can see my sketch. And the question would be, in, in former times, you were able to create a direct relation from sketch to geometry and in version 1926 as well as 1953 you were missing the opportunity within the new sketch creation dialog to define a proper orientation it's only possible within the reattach sketch tool but not within the create sketch tool itself since 1980 you have the possibility of create or define an orientation within the create sketch dialog again. And some of you, I believe, were missing this opportunity, but honestly, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't caring about the orientation opportunity because I was not using it because in my opinion, it's not necessary. In my opinion, it makes more sense to always create a coordinate system first and then create a relation between sketch and coordinate system because in that case you would not need the possibility of defining an orientation which is complex within the sketch tool because I think it's too much information within one feature and you have a much better control of your sketch position when you create the position, when you define the position within a coordinate system, as well as reusing the sketch is much easier because this sketch is orientated to zero. The orientation is pretty simple. It's just an X and Y plane of a coordinate system. And reuse is much easier, much more comfortable when the positioning is not defined within the sketch. You just gotta copy and paste this to a further reference. I can't copy and paste this one because it's referenced to external points. This is also a topic which I do avoid, of course, in the version of this part, which I'm gonna show you next week. And if you have a look at all my videos, I'm not using external references, but I know some of you do. And you all, or some of you, had the problem in NX 1926 before some minor releases where external relation causes problems. Even if it doesn't cause that much or that sort of problems anymore, as you did see after this demonstration, you should always avoid using external references. Of course, sometimes we have to project points or some kind of geometry, sometimes we do, but those should always be special use cases. And hopefully those problems are solved now with the new minor and major release NX1980. Anyway, how do I create this sort of relation? How do I avoid the defining of position within the create sketch dialog? You can, as you can see, and I don't need to demonstrate this. Shall I? Okay, let's do a tiny demonstration. Well, we have geometry here, so I'm just going to roll back. How do I create a relation to this geometry? Well, that's pretty simple. I'm going to use create sketch and here you can see the typical preview of the internal coordinate system. And there are only two choices. Is it well orientated? No. I know that some of you don't care now, but you should always care about the orientation. Well, the sketch normal is pointing towards this side, so it would be completely disorientated now that's what i want to avoid so as an origin now there is no possibility in that case to select this center point because this is not a plane surface it is plain but it's a b surface honestly it's a b surface i cannot select this center point but what you can do is you can use the internal point dialog in order to use between two points that's what you can do in order to create the center point like this. 
And of course, I gotta reverse some directions. By the preview of this designation, you can easily identify the orientation of the sketch. So I have to reverse twice. And when you can read this, you can make sure by this that the sketch will be orientated like that. And that's the way I want the sketch to be orientated. My question to you, do you care about orientation of your sketch? I personally do, and I do recommend every one of you to take care of the orientation. This is possible now, and this is how you should use it. I'm just gonna cancel it, because for my use case, and that's what I recommend you to do, I'm using external coordinate systems. But how do I create a relation? Well, just have a look at the coordinate system. There is no relation to this surface. This is something I wanted to avoid. That's one of the main reasons I'm using coordinate systems. Or anyway, I'm not creating relations to such geometry. Just imagine flattening and forming. It's, it was just a try and I was trying a lot of opportunities in order to create the impossible pattern. That's everything. I wanted to avoid creating a relation to this one. But what I did I was creating a relation to a point that is related to a curve in that case, which is more stable. And maybe I could have used another curve instead. Maybe I could have used this one as well. It would have been much better. I could have used this one as well. So I was creating a point which could have been related to this curve. And I was reusing the X and Y as you can see when I double click this new coordinate system, there's one point, there is an X axis and Y axis, which are reused from the basic coordinate system that will never ever be modified. So by this method, I have made sure to reuse references that are much more stable than this surface. And especially when concerning flattening and forming, this is recalculated several times. Just imagine there is a modification within my sketch and this is replaced. The relation to this surface can't be as stable as the relation to any other kind of object within this certain construction, especially the older object. Just remember, horizontal modeling. I'm gonna link a video on top of this video. Just have a look. I'm just going to do a further modification to show you, to demonstrate you how strong this pattern is. And this, I have to say, is the first try. The version I'm going to show you next week includes a little bit more complexity. There is going to be some cutdowns inside and is even simpler than this version. But anyway, I'm going to demonstrate you how strong this is. I'm just going to delete this curve, for example, and replace it by an arc instead. I did not try this before. Hopefully it's going to be updated properly. But I believe it does. As you can see, it does. That's what I'm going to show you next week. You did see some of the improvements in NX 1980. I was just discussing a little bit more than I wanted, but of course it allows us all to discuss within the comment section below this video. I'm looking for what you comments there. I'm looking for what you likes if you like the video and I can't wait to see your comments below the next video next week because next week I'm gonna show you how to create the impossible pattern. Stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't yet use the ring button to be informed. I'm looking for your comments. Thank you for watching this video until the end. Talk to you soon. Goodbye.